Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another episode of In Conversation with Bright Minds. And today we have with us Hrithik Goel. Hrithik is currently consulted at ENY Economic Policy Group, and he has just completed his master's from JNU. So welcome to the show, Hrithik. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Glad to be here. So Hrithik, we would like to start by understanding your journey right from your college life. How was your college life? And, you know, how you applied for your master's at JNU? Yeah, sure. So I started my journey in economics itself. That was my priority. I love the subject. So I did my bachelor's degree in economics from Ramjas College, okay. Delhi University. And uh, while it was a little challenging in the first year, but uh, in the second year onwards, I got the hold of the subject a little bit. I started uh, doing a bit of research, doing internships. And, you know, delving deep into the subject, I found it very interesting. So I started preparing for a master's degree entrance and COVID helped a bit in the third year. We had no classes. So that helped a lot of students took a, you know, drop year and then work. But I really, uh, you know, managed it uh, during my third year itself. So hmm. a couple of other uh, colleges I went through as well. But my priority were uh, DSC and uh, JNU and JNU was the one where I got in. I gave an entrance for it. So I got through to JNU uh, during 2021, which was again delayed because of COVID second wave. And mm. we had effectively 14, 50 months of degree instead of complete two years. So we were always rushing with the courses. So it was a little challenging, uh, especially because I was interning in a couple of very big firms during my master's degree okay. as well. Yeah. So, but it was uh, eventually all smooth sailing, great uh, experiences, great. Uh, professors across both universities and some great memories yeah got it so so you mentioned that you were interning along with doing masters right yeah. so um where exactly were you interning and how did you manage doing masters along with an internship uh, okay right so i was interning firstly at pwc as a public policy uh, economic policy intern uh, and what happened was we had one month of summer break after the end of my first semester. So my internship was of two months. Uh, during the summer break of one month, I did my first month. And for the second month, I had to really juggle around between classes and between meetings and, you know, incorporate when you work. It's not as if you can work at any stage. If there is a meeting, you have to be there, right? So it's not very flexible sometimes. But uh, because JNU, uh, you know, faculty and, uh, you know, timetable was so good and flexible, uh, I somehow managed it. It wasn't easy and I won't suggest anybody to take this opportunity up until you have, uh, you know, worked out how you're going to manage stuff. But mm -hmm. if you can add this sort of a thing to your CV during your master's, it's going to be pretty good. So I juggled around in the second month, but it all worked out in the end. Got it. Got it. So, um, you know, tell us about the placement cell at JNU. How is that and was your current is your current placement was it a campus placement or uh, did you get it from outside uh mine wasn't a placement from the campus i found it from the outside uh as far as the overall placements are concerned they're pretty decent i won't say they are excellent because jnu is uh, more of a you know research academia based institution if you are crazy about academia going into you know game theory and macro and all that mm -hmm. stuff uh, we have got some of the great professors, great names here. As far as placement, cell is concerned, we have four or five, uh, you know, long-standing members that turn up for the placements every year. But it's certainly not the best. You have to stand out a bit and there are limited opportunities. It's not as if there are no opportunities, but very limited compared to a DSC or an IG IDR or an ISI. But three or four good opportunities, if you can manage to crack them, you can get through and there is a great chance that you may not be able to because as I said, 90, 100 students, not enough opportunities. Okay. So uh, in this case, uh, you know, first of all, then how should a student be applying outside? What process did you follow and, you know, what would you suggest juniors to do in that case? Okay. So see, uh, it's very uh, straightforward and I'll be straightforward in saying that after postgrad you just can't go on LinkedIn and applying on application portals because more or less they won't be noticed. 
everybody knows that application tracking systems are very difficult to get through. Mm. So what you need to do first of all is to prepare a very good CV. Mm. So what happens is you get very good formats across platforms online. You can use latex in which we write research papers wherein I coded my CV. You can do that. Uh, take help from platforms, use keywords. For most economic students, either it's data analyst or, you know, consulting or public policy. These are the main fields. So use keywords related to those. What kind of keywords are there? So prepare mm. a very good CV. Second thing, a lot of these firms are looking for these days are projects. So if you can get a research paper done and published and use some sort of, you know, econometric, some sort of software in it, that is going to help you a great deal. It helped me. I had a couple of very good publications in reputed journals in my graduation itself. Mm -hmm. In post that it's difficult because, you know, PhDs, etc. are also competing. But if you can manage to get it, uh, even in your term papers, if you can manage to write it properly, that helps. That's the second thing. Third thing you need to do is... Mm, I would say it's the difficult thing, but if you can make connections through your internships. Mm. So I did a couple of projects that helped me notice uh, my name. It's not as if I just sent my CV to anybody and I got through. Because I'd worked at certain places, uh, people realized that I might be a good fit for this kind of a job. And that's where I got through. Uh, as far as uh, getting an internship done, it's the challenging portion. I challenged uh, myself throughout my graduation and post-graduation, I will message people on LinkedIn. I'll connect with them. I'll write cold emails to HR. One day or the other, you might get an opportunity mm. and just connect with people on LinkedIn. There's so many people posting about openings and all. So try if, if your serious uh, ambition is to get a job, start working from the first year of master's. Try to get an internship. Try to get a project in and maybe keep applying all the time. At some stage, you will get through. It's not uh, impossible. Got it, got it. Yeah. So, you know, when it comes to JNU, uh, what what are the opportunities that it provides in terms of internship? Is it the same that you have to look for internship also from outside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think there is any dedicated method of finding internships through campus here. Okay. Though I see that the placement cell is quite active now on, on LinkedIn and looking out for opportunities for students. Yeah, it is. It has become more active in the last two, three years, certainly more than what it was. And some personal reasons, some reasons there, which perhaps are not very easy to, you know, uh, talk about. But over the years, placements have been tricky. Uh, earlier, we had very good placements and for some reason, they became a little off. But in the last two, three uh, seasons, uh, our seniors have tried their level best. And it's mostly a student-run placement cell. is isn't as if we are getting any fundings, we are getting any support. We don't have company connections as some of the other top institutes have. So it's mostly student-run. So they're trying their best to take it to a next level. And I'm pretty sure it will improve in the next uh, few years. Got it. Got it. Sure. So, uh, you know, then another thing that a lot of students ask is, uh, when it comes to corporate jobs, should they be going for JNU SSS program or SIS program from the point of view of getting placed? Hmm. See, I haven't gone through the SIS courses, but it's pretty much uh, same. I mean, okay. for the last couple of years, we have been sitting together for placements, hmm. both okay. SSS and SIS. So it's not as if they have their separate placements we have. For a couple of companies, yes, they are free to bring their own uh, companies. We are free to bring our own companies, but more or less, we are sitting together. Both have their own strengths and weaknesses in some respects. SIS may be a little more data-oriented courses, a little more mathematical-oriented, but it's not as if a, a triple S doesn't have those courses. We have uh, pretty good courses of our own. So I think there is hardly any difference. But if you are very keen on doing all the courses, not from, say, a very theoretical, you know, uh, point of view. You want only the proof side of things. Maybe you can uh, do SIS, but there's not a great deal of difference. Okay. Otherwise, they're mostly the same. Yeah, they're mostly on, you know, international trade and uh, balance mm -hmm. of payment. They focus a lot on, on these courses. Got it. Got it. And what about the professors? Professors are also the same who teach the two uh, uh, students. Uh, that's something I cannot really comment okay. on because okay. I haven't gone through their professors' teachings. Mm. But a couple of their professors in labor economics and econometrics are highly revered. So they have pretty good professors as well, no doubt about it. Ours have left a legacy. There is no doubt about that. 
got it sure so um, you know another thing that i wanted to understand uh, so since uh, you know you mentioned that the last year uh, when you were preparing for your entrance exam was the covid period so yeah. you know how should a student dedicate that last third year along with doing their semester exams and along with doing the internals of the college how should that one year be dedicated for the preparation of uh, you know various entrance exams right so uh, the challenge for ma econ entrance is is that vastly different uh, questions are asked across vastly different universities so first of all you need to understand what your areas are if you are big on corporate if you are big on mathematics if you are big on econometrics you might shortlist a dsc an isi or an ig idea but if you are certain that you i want to go to academia i want to do a phd maybe jnu would be a good option or university of hyderabad and accordingly you should start preparing now there is a certain level of basic which you need to do and there is nothing in the entrance that is asked which is not taught in delhi universities or like i did from delhi university but uh, for other universities as well 50 60% at least is covered during a second year exactly right so in the third year what happens is mostly courses are theoretical right indian economy development economics mm. what you can do with those courses is that you don't need to like you know do all the solving and practice all the time so you can like for micro and second year it's highly mathematical right exactly. macro and micro you need to be you know consistent with prep but in third year it's not really the case and uh, you can then take those two hours extra out of every day schedule and start preparing for your uh, you know entrance exams and you need to be very careful with the fact that uh different entrances as i said have different requirements so you don't end up preparing only for one entrance because you mm. never know what will happen eventually so take out three four universities target them take two hours out nobody is asking you to prepare you know six hours a day but give dedicated uh, dedicated time on weekends mostly colleges have uh, saturday off in third year and if you can do it try to take li- lighter courses in third mm. year we do have that option right it's not compulsory to take all the courses take courses which require less hard work less demand because you anyway will study their extensive forms during your masters so try uh, working around the courses as well if you can got it sure so rithik just one last question i have for you so yeah. uh, you know given that now you have been placed at ny how much do you think i mean i know it's a short period right now but how much do you think is the economic knowledge that you have you know gained in your masters helping you or during your job uh immensely <laughs> okay i would say, say because see it's not in my corporate job nobody will ask me to prove kenshin multiply that is pretty certain if somebody is giving me a project that what should this state government do to improve their economic growth i can't present them the islm model that is for certain but i should know from the classroom knowledge what kind of impact can monetary policy have on their interest rates what kind of impact you know improving their labor force or education or productivity so those sort of things maybe not ultra theoretical but certainly logical thinking some sort of econometrics definitely if you can do some sort of r or excel that helps a bit so it's not hardcore game theory or hardcore you know mathematics as such but definitely logical thinking and macroeconomics does help but and uh, are you required to use any kind of uh, you know coding also r or python or is it a theoretical uh, uh, part that you are required to do uh it depends upon the project most of the projects do not require us to do coding but yeah a couple of projects we were required to you know code on r so it's up to the project it's not compulsory it's not a data analyst job but analytics is a part of some of the projects got it so yeah. would you suggest a student to gain this knowledge while doing masters or uh, do you think that that can be taken care of later on also uh, i would suggest them to go through the basics at least through the masters degree nobody see uh, when you study uh, analytics a lot of people try to delve into data science straight away which mm. is a lot bigger domain as you would know so i would suggest them to you know start with basic analytics visualization regression which can easily be done over a weekend in r got it it's not very difficult because when you are writing your research papers as well you need to run some regressions right so where will you uh, run those regressions so i would suggest do a bit and then you can learn over a period of time sure so um 
thank you rithik i think so we answered all the questions that a student can have uh, during their bachelor's and master's journey and i wish you all the best for your journey in the corporate sector and may you achieve greater heights in your corporate sector job thank you so much ma'am okay. thank you for having thank me and pleasure thank you so much take care bye